Welcome back. We're now going to dive into getting our camera configured. So let's go ahead and select our camera. Um, up here in the top, these buttons I have right here is sort of like grab and move mode. Um, that's sort of like the generic. Um, I'm using the mouse buttons here to, to zoom in, zoom out, right mouse button to pan around, and uh, middle mouse button to uh, drag. This is for positioning along the axes. This is for rotating. This is for scaling. Uh, and this is sprite controls. So, um, and the other stuff we'll get into the center and global as it comes up. So we're going to take our main camera and I'm going to create a cube. Um, and then over in the window, see, you've got like a weird position. You can double click on something and find it in the world. Um, but if I select that and the camera at the same time, you can see it's way out in space. That's not good. I could manually type all these to zero, but you can also click on this and hit reset. Um, and this is this cube. I'm actually going to create a second cube uh, and reset it as well. Now I have two cubes. Um, I'm going to roll around a bit with the widget here. Okay. You can see I can just spin around on this widget until uh, I'm looking at where it says the front. I'm going to turn off the scene lighting. and. I'm going to turn off Skybox for a second. Okay, so these buttons up here allows you to turn the audio uh, audio on and off. Turn off the Skybox. We don't want fog. We don't want flares. Um, we can apply the lighting or not there. Um, just so we can sort of see our image. Now, our main camera is behind. So that's sort of a weird thing. So where it says front is actually the back. Uh, we can confirm that. Uh, if I drag this, see it's going the opposite way. Just to make things easier, um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on the main camera and I'm going to in just change the negative on the z-axis. Um, and then, so z is the axis that is coming towards us. You see this is x and y. If I Rotate a bit. Maybe you can see there we go X Y and Z. So maybe sometimes it helps just to see uh, What these different axes are uh, they're always the same color too So Y is green and now that I've moved the camera um, To the front side I have to spin it around 180 degrees and that's going to be on the green. If you look at this pole, this is the pole I want to spin around, which is the Y. So if I go into the Y and I type in 180, uh, we're now looking at the scene. Um, now the next thing to notice here is, let's go check out our directional light real quick. Our directional light, you can see, is shining into the camera. And we sort of want to shine it into... Um, the block. So I'm just going to grab the wheel, uh, the rotate wheel, and do it that way. Um, I am going to do it at an angle just so that we can get a bit of a um, distinction on the sides of the cubes. Um, I'll click on the lighting again so we can see that. That looks okay. Now, this directional light that starts off in a default scene um, is light that always shines from one direction. So once I kind of have it set, I can just get rid of it. It doesn't matter what its position is. Okay. It is light that shines from a given direction and its position has uh, no bearing on its lighting effect. Okay. So I've got these two cubes and now if I look down the Z and the front again and then I double click on my cube. There we go. Uh, I can double click on this cube. Um, can see we've got these two cubes. Now, I said we're going to do this as a, um, you know, that directional light is still sort of dark from the front, isn't it? Let's just go ahead and I'll show you that you can grab and just drag. If you notice, I'm just grabbing and dragging the number. 
instead of finding the actual uh, directional light, but you could still find the directional light um, and just rotate it that way. Maybe use the bottom if you've moved it like I have. Uh, let's... There we go. That's, that's kind of nice. It's shading them the way I kind of want right there. All right. So, with this done now, I'm going to get back to our dragon. You can see as I move them around, they have perspective. Okay, we're in 3D mode. Uh, moving closer, they get bigger. Moving further away, they get smaller. All right. Now, on the camera, the camera is really what controls whether you're a 2D or a 3D uh, game. At least what we're going to think of as 2D or 3D is really camera projections. It's how the camera um, treats the world. Okay, perspective is is sort of what we would consider normal, it's sort of how a human eye and a regular camera works. You get a single point, and it's going out uh, from that point in a sort of a pyramid type fashion. Um, you can see that. The other mode that we have is orthographic. Okay, now you see it went to this long tunnel vision uh, mode. I'm actually going to bring it way up, so. The front of the camera is controlled by the near plane, and the the back of the camera is controlled by the far plane. So I'm going to go ahead and make that 20, just so um, we can better see what we're working with here. All right. So notice now the camera is flat, just a flat rectangle the entire way through. So in orthographic mode, um, instead of having any perspective whatsoever, it's a flat projection. Out and notice that these two cubes are still different distances from the camera. Okay, if we go back to perspective mode, you can see that here. When we go to orthographic, you can see you can no longer see in the game that they are at different depths, right? Even if I grab it and I move it closer and further away, I can pop it off if it goes out too far. But other than that, you can't tell. Okay, so this is actually what we're going to do for our 2D game. It's going to be a 2D looking game down here. Um, but we're going to do it all in 3D just so that we get more acclimated with the 3D uh, physics tools and the 3D features of the game. And the reason I'm choosing to do this rather than go ahead and just make it a 2D game on it, uh, its own, is that maybe this is a little bit more ap applicability as a tutorial to whatever type of game that you want to make. Um, so there are some strict for 2D features and there are some strict for 3D only features, but there are equivalents. So don't worry if we just do one and not the other, that you, there might not be something that you can do. Um, but if you do know, like, I just want to straight up make a 2D game, you might want to delve more into the 2D features of Unity. Just know that the 2D features of Unity are relatively new compared to the 3D features, all right? And they're not as robust and featured. They're getting there, but as of uh, version 5, it's still not going to come without some pain. And by pain, I mean you can't stay in a beautiful 2D world. You're going to have to jump down and do some... 3D stuff uh, in your 2D game um, to make things work the way you want. That will change over time, of course. Okay, so with our two cubes, and now they're flat and we have a nice perspective, um, the other thing that we can change on the camera is the size indicator. So I can make this camera um, as big or as small as I want it, right? And to get a better idea of what I'm changing, I'll zoom out here. Um, to change that size. So it looks like it's just an artifact of pro the projection. It's not getting fatter or skinnier. It's just how much is the play zone. Um, for making math easy, for this first game, instead of being really close up and scaling everything way down, you can see the cubes have a scale of one in all directions. 
I get on my cube here. And just to deal with that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this size and I'm going to scale it down to uh, right around there. And then I'm going to make it a nice even number 12. Okay, just type that in. Because that's going to be about the size of the ball uh, that I'll do in this 16 by 9 game. Okay? And that's why I size it by that. Um, so what that 12 actually is, is half the height. Okay? So from here to here is 24. So if I've not messed that up, I can grab the Y. And if I move him to 12, he's at the top. And if I move this cube to negative 12, he's below. Why did it not work out perfectly? Because the camera is centered at 1 instead of 0. So now that I centered him at 0, okay, we've got a nice set of 12 is the top and 12 is the bottom. The width is actually going to be calculated from the aspect ratio of the window, okay? So in a 16 by 9 game, I could go through all this and we could figure it out. If we know the height and then we can use that size, we can calculate it out. You can also just take a cube and drag it over here and rough it in and then look up here and go, oh, okay, it's about 21. All right, that's close enough. It's probably not exactly 21, but we can put this guy at negative 21 and sort of know what our bounds are. So, um, like I said, we could assume this in really, really tight, and these would all be decimal place numbers, but this makes it a nice even um, round. The other thing I want to do is make sure these cubes are on zero on the Z axis so that if they interact with each other, they will. And now that we've sort of got our camera and our 3D um, set up, I'm going to take these cubes and I'm going to stretch them into place and sort of make like a, a bounding box for us to start working in, okay? So let's take this first cube here uh, and we'll make it be the top of our play zone. So since we know that X is um, going to be 21, it's actually 42 across. So if we put him back into X0, he's centered, and we do 21, that's the half. If we do 42, not 24, 42, he nearly spans the entire thing. Um, the reason it didn't perfectly fit is the cube takes up space. Let me zoom in on him. But the point from which we're working with is the center. So when it says scale of 1, it's 0.5 from either direction. Okay. So that's why we have, we would have to take into account that 40, that 0.5 on here. And so if we scaled it to 43, which is 0.5 in each direction, you can see it goes, I'll zoom in on this for you. It goes from edge to edge, right? Which is kind of the look that we want. All right, so with that cube at 43, we can do the same on this cube. We can zero it out and 43 there. Um, we can create another cube. And the first thing we're going to do is hit reset. So he's dead center. And then on this one, we'll go to 21 on the X. Oops, sorry. That's the wrong, that's the scale. So we'll put him back to one. Um, so we'll put him 21 over and make him 25 high. Again, we got to cover that 0.5 on each side. And then I could do a create a cube, but you can also right click and say duplicate. And that makes a cube with the exact properties that we just had. And then so for this cube three, all I got to do here is put a negative sign. Okay. And I did it on the wrong one again. I'm sorry. Put a negative sign on the X position. There we go. So we sort of got a bounding zone for us um, to start working from. 
in our game here. And we've got our perspective uh, set. So I don't know um, that there's any more I want to cover um, in, in this video. We sort of have the basics of this. I think the last thing I'll do here is this looks like a mess. So I'm going to create an empty. So an empty, and I'm going to reset to zero, 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 just to make sure it's all zeroed out. Uh, and I'm just going to call this wall. Okay. So I change the name there. And I'm going to parent all of these guys underneath wall. Now you can do things with code in this. This can become significant. These parent child relationships and how they matter. You can also just use it to sort of grab everything at once and do something with it. For example, I could just uncheck wall from the scene now and everything beneath it will no longer render. If I wanted to scale the whole thing as a whole, um, I could grab it and then scale it all up together. And that doesn't change the individual settings that are on each individual cube. They keep those settings, but they're relative to the settings of the parent. So I'm going to reset that back to one. Um, and we're just going to use this as sort of an organizational feature right now. The only, the only other thing to cover in this video, I think, before I stop this one and start the next one, is I've been using these position, rotation, and scale boxes uh, over here. Um, they're probably self-explanatory. But notice when I created an empty, I still had a transform. Okay, so the secret in Unity, the actual truth in Unity, is everything on here is a game object. They are all identical. What makes this one a camera, and makes this one directional light, and makes this one a cube, are the components. So I could create an empty. I'm going to reset it so it's centered. Okay, and I'm going to add a component, mesh. Mesh renderer. Okay. I'm going to add a component that is a mesh filter. I'm going to set that mesh filter to the built in Unity cube. I'm going to add a component. Um, well, I need to set a material. I'm going to set the um, default. I'll go with default diffuse. I don't know which one it was on. Um, we'll go with one of those. We'll go to default material. Uh, I'm going to add a component physics of a box collider. And now my cube has everything. Mesh filter, box collider, mesh renderer. Mesh filter, box collider, mesh renderer. Okay. They're in a slightly different order, but that's okay. Um, my cube that I created from scratch is everything that this cube does. I could turn this cube into a camera simply by going to rendering camera. And now this cube is actually a camera as well. All right. I can then remove that component um, from it um, as well. This cube could be a directional light. Uh, this cube could, let's see, flare. Oh, there we go. There's a light. So this cube could be a point light and we'll make it red. Okay. And uh, we're going to crank up the intensity uh, of the light just so we can see the effect here. That when this cube gets, this circle is sort of showing you the effect of the light radius. When it gets over here, okay, you can see here that it's casting red. Now we don't see it here because of the projection of the camera. We're looking at it dead on. And this is shining light just evenly out from the point. If we move it forward a bit, move it in front, we should see, uh, we might have be fighting um, the directional light a bit. So currently real time 
shadow. I'm not going to get to debugging exactly what I didn't do correctly. Oh, there it goes. We're casting a, a weird red shadow now um, on our wall. Not showing up down here, but that's okay. Um, I just wanted to show you that's what makes um, items. They are Everything is a game object and it's constructed from components. But every game component has a transform. All right, that you can be guaranteed of. I'm sorry, every game object has a component transform. Not every component has a transform. All right, I'm going to say where we're at. And um, we're going to pick this up uh, next video and start looking into some physics.